Matrices are a special type of vector in R, so they're not a, a, different, a separate class of objects, um, but they're basically vectors that have a, an attribute called the, uh, called the dimension. Um, so the dimension attribute um, is an integer vector of length 2, where the first number is the number of rows of the matrix, and the second number is the number of columns. And so uh, if I can create a matrix, an empty matrix with the matrix function, and I can explicitly say how many rows and how many columns there are. Um, this is not the only way to create a matrix, but it's one way. And so when I auto print the matrix by typing the, the object M and hitting enter, you'll see that it'll show me that, first of all, the matrix is full, is initialized with NA values, so there's no values in here. Uh, and you can see that there's two rows and three columns, and they're labeled by the numbers in the brackets. Uh, if I call the dim function on M, it'll give me the dimension attribute, which in this case it says there are two rows and three columns, because the first row is the number of rows, and the second number, sorry, excuse me, the first number is the number of rows and the second number is the number of columns. If I call the attributes function on M, you'll see it, it returns a list where the first element is the dim element and it has the, it has the vector 2, 3. So these are all aspects of a matrix, um, which is a vector that has a dimension attribute to it. Um, ma matrices are constructed column-wise, so you can, you can think of the matrix uh, taking a vector and all the numbers are inserted into the matrix um, by the by columns. So the first column gets filled, and then when the when you hit the number maximum number of rows, then the second column gets filled, and the third column, etc. So if I create a matrix by taking the sequence one to six, um, and then I say I specify that it has two rows and three columns, well, how does this matrix get con get constructed? So the way it gets constructed column wise, so the first thing that happens is it takes one two, and now there's only two rows, so it can only go to 2, and then that makes the first column. The second column is made up of 3, 4, and then the third column is made up of 5 and 6. Um, you can also create um, a matrix by creating the dimension attribute on a vector. So for example, um, I can take, I can create a vector that's a sequence 1 to 10, um, and then um, add the dimension attribute to it. So here I'm using the dim function, but I'm assigning a, a value to the dim attribute of m. So here I'm assigning the vector 2, 5. So what I'm saying is I want, I want to take this vector and transform it into a matrix that is two rows and five columns. And so now after I've done that, I've got a matrix m, which has two rows and five columns, and it's filled in the matrix column-wise. Uh, another way to create a matrix, and this is a common way, is by binding columns or binding rows. Um, and so you, this is column, column binding and row binding can be achieved by the, the functions C bind and R bind. Uh, so for example, suppose I have the two objects X, which is a sequence from 1 to 3, and Y, which is a sequence from 10 to 12. Uh, if I C bind those two objects, then I'll get a, I'll get a matrix um, where the first column is 1 to 3, and the second column is 10 to 12. So this is kind of what you might expect would happen. Uh, if I R bind those two objects, then the first row will be 1, 2, 3, and the second row will be 10 through 12. So C binding and R binding is another way to create a matrix. Uh, 